Welcome back everybody um, to the second part of the reactions of ethers with strong acids and again for the sake of consistency I'll be focusing on hydrobromic acid. Uh, so let's get uh, started with the tertiary reaction mechanism of, an, of a tertiary ether with this strong acid hydrobromic acid. Okay, So pretty similar to the first reaction mechanism I showed you you're going to form a bond between this oxygen and this hydrogen okay so you have the arrow coming at the hydrogen and the lone pairs are what you use to form the bond okay so now you kick off this uh, pair of electron to the bromine okay the result of this step the result of the step is this you have a hydrogen now on your ether with a positive charge on the oxygen okay and you still have this little piece hanging off okay so the previous example it followed an SN2 style of reaction mechanism and this specific example uh, of in regards to tertiary um, ethers will follow an SN1 style of reaction mechanism. So what will happen is a pair of, um, you'll form the carbocation intermediate, intermediate. So the pair of electrons here are going to be kicked off to the oxygen. Okay. So some of you guys might be wondering, how do you know that you pick this bond here to kick off to the oxygen, or the pair of electrons in this bond kick off to the oxygen? Well, you know that because again if you follow the rule that I stated in the previous part that in regards to tertiary ethers the bromine or the conjugate base of the strong acid will attach to the more substituted um, carbon again this is the carbon that's most substituted right and it's a, because it's a tertiary carbon compared to a primary carbon so the only way you can have the bromine attached here is by forming a carbocation intermediate so that the bromine can now form a bond with that carbocation intermediate so when you're doing the carbocation intermediate step when you're producing that carbocation think about which carbocation you want to form you want to form the more substituted carbocation so whenever you get to this step and you're trying to decide which pair of electrons you're trying to kick off to the oxygen to form your alcohol remember you want to form the most substituted carbocation intermediate so you'll kick off this pair of electrons to form a tertiary carbocation intermediate so that's what I did here so the product the product of this step is your tertiary carbocation intermediate right plus you formed okay I'll put it down here plus you formed your alcohol which was primary okay so you formed your primary alcohol now simply what happens typical of SN1 reactions this is your BR minus right comes now and forms the bond here and that's all it is to it and the product you form is your tertiary alkyl halide plus your primary alcohol Okay, let me move that positive charge. Let me move that plus. I mean, so it doesn't look like it's a positive charge. Okay, so you form this and this as your product. Okay, so again, let's go over the reaction mechanism. Again, if you have a tertiary ether and you react it with hydrobromic acid, the bromine is then attached to the more substituted carbon. Okay so excuse me 
pair of electrons from the oxygen forms a bond with the hydrogen this bond right here kicks off to the bromine you form this intermediate with a positive charge on the oxygen now you want to form the most substituted carbocation intermediate so you kick off this pair of electrons onto the oxygen that's how you form this carbocation intermediate and, the, and as a byproduct of this step you form the alcohol Okay. now the, the final step in the reaction mechanism is that the bromine forms a bond with the uh, carbon bearing the positive charge and that is how you form your tertiary alkyl halide and your primary alcohol okay so again if if this was a ter again if if we remain this as the same if we leave this the same and let's just say this was a secondary uh, uh, what is the secondary carbon it will follow the same exact same mechanism you still form a tertiary alkyl halide but instead you'll form a secondary alcohol again so if you have anything that if you have any type of carbon in an ether that is tertiary okay and I'm not referring to just any carbon I'm referring to the carbon directly attached to the oxygen if you have any type of carbon directly attached to the oxygen that is tertiary it will follow this reaction mechanism and it will form these types of products okay so remember that so there you have it um, before I end the video um, and this part on the reactions of ethers with strong acids I want to just give you guys a little table um, kind of summarizing the main points of of this topic of this specific top topic so again if you have a um, in one category you have a tertiary ether and in the other category you have the primary slash secondary um, ethers okay so those are the two categories we'll focus on okay so some of the types of ethers that will follow the tertiary reaction mechanism I showed you so um, I'm kinda of running out of battery right now on my uh, on my camcorder so what I'll do is I'll make a third part finishing up this uh, table so please stay tuned